As you can see, when we have a passing test, we do have the green here down the side. But if it was to change something, you would notice that instantly we would get not only the error message, but also the red box. So in order to test the HTTP client, we need to have a service that of course takes advantage of that. So let's generate ourselves a new service. I'm going to run NGGS for ng generate service, and this will simply be called data. I would most likely place this inside of a providers or service folder, but we'll simply just be importing it into the providers inside of our app module. The data service itself will simply have a root URL. And we can set that equal to any API that we want to use. I'll be using the JSON placeholder API and I'll be making a function called get posts. This will return us a list of posts, but in order to take advantage of that, we'll need to import the Angular HTTP client from Angular common HTTP. We can then inject that into our constructor and we can return this.http.get. I want to use backticks to return the root URL slash posts. Now, if we've done everything correctly, we should then, of course, get a list of posts on screen. But what we want to do is as we sort of add more to this service and maybe as we add more to our application, we want to verify that we're actually getting a list of posts from our API and that everything's working correctly. So we'll head over to our dataservice.spec.ts. You'll notice that inside of the describe block, we're describing that we want to be testing the data service. Before each test is run, we're creating a new module with a test bed, and we're providing that data service to this class. Now, there are a variety of ways in which we could go about testing a provider. We could, if we wanted to provide a mock here, but the HTTP client gives us what's known as the HTTP client testing module. So let's first off import that from at angular slash common HTTP testing. We can then add that to our test bed module. And instead of injecting the data service each time into the it assertion, what we'll do instead is make ourselves a reference to a service, which will be of type data service, and we'll assign that only once. So inside of our before each here, we'll set service equal to testbed.get. And what this does is it gives us an injected version of that data service, which we can then use throughout our project. I'm then going to delete this it assertion like so. And inside of our data service, perhaps we want another describe block here and we could go down everything to do with getting posts. But for now, I'm simply just gonna have an it block which says it should retrieve posts from the API. We could also add via get here if we wanted to as well and we can test that assertion also. So now we have the body of our it function. And we can start off by making some dummy posts. And what this essentially will be is just some posts that we can expect to get from our API. So maybe we'd have a user ID. And that happens to be a string. An ID, which happens to be a number. A body, so the body of the post. And finally, the title, such as testing Angular. Let's have a couple of items inside of our dummy post. And we can even go ahead and maybe make a models folder. And inside of here, we might want a post.model.ts. We can export an interface called post that has these different things. We can then set an appropriate type. 
And the next thing we want to do at this point, so we have some dummy posts that we expect to get back. We then want to say service.getPosts. And this is our getPosts method. As you can see at the moment, it returns an observable of object, so we can go and fix that by heading back to the service and instead saying it will be an observable of posts. We can subscribe to this inside of our service. And at this point, now we have a list of posts or an array of posts. We can expect that the posts.length, so this would be the array that we get back, should be equal to two. And that's because what's happening is it doesn't matter how long the posts are from the API itself, the dummy posts will instead replace that data. So we could also make another assertion that maybe the posts themselves would be equal to the dummy posts. So we're nearly there. What we need to do at this point is now start to fire off that request because we haven't actually fired a request at this point. We need to then use what's known as a HTTP mock. So this comes from the HTTP testing controller and that comes from the Angular common HTTP testing module. So we can make a new let HTTP mock of type HTTP testing controller. We can now set the value of our HTTP mock equal to testbed.get. And this time we want to get the testing controller. And here inside of our it block again, we want to start setting up our request. So that could be equal to our HTTP mock dot. And then we have a few different things. We have expect none. This means that no requests should have been sent. We have expect one and also match and verify. We want to expect one at this point because we only want to expect that there was a single request made to our URL. So we expect that the request was made to our service dot root URL. And at this point, I'm going to remove private from our data service. So we simply just have this root URL public to the class. And then I'm going to add slash posts. After that, we can expect that the request itself dot request, so this is the request object, and the method should be equal to get. So essentially what we're asserting at this point is that the method of our HTTP call should have been get. So if this was something like post, then of course it would fail. And the final thing we need to do is say request.flush and pass through our dummy posts. Because what this is then doing is it's allowing our get posts to use this dummy posts here and it allows us to fire off that HTTP request. As you can see here, the flush method returns the body and any other data such as the response headers if provided. And so far we have a passing test. Now at this point, everything works as expected. It does retrieve us those dummy posts. We are of course looking at the get method and we're pointing our HTTP client at the service root URL slash posts. The final thing to do at this point is to add an after each. And what we want to run inside of this after each is HTTP mock dot verify. And what this does is it just means that anytime we test our data, so for example, if we make an assertion on the HTTP mock itself, it will ensure that there's no requests outstanding. And then we don't have any sort of state issues going into another test. So let's just run verify like so, and that finishes up testing our HTTP client. If we head back over to our data service and we instead change this to be slash post, you'll notice that instantly our HTTP mock does fail because it does expect the URL to be slash posts. So what we end up with is a test that allows us to, of course, check to see whether we are retrieving posts from our API via get and of course, we are looking to see those dummy posts as well. 
So what have we looked at inside of this lecture? Well, we've looked at things like testbed and making testing modules. We've looked at getting instances of injected services using testbed.get. We've looked at the HTTP client testing module and the subsequent testing controller. We've looked at determining whether our URL was correct, whether our request method was also correct. And this allows us to then, of course, test to see whether we are getting those posts as expected. Oh, this new crazy mother...